Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a look at whether you need to use a separate CPC or circuit protected conductor when installing steel conduit. So in other words, can you just use the steel conduit itself as your earth connection at the various items? Or do you in fact need to draw in an extra wire in here, which will be green and yellow insulated, to provide that function? And the uh, short answer is that you do not need to draw in a separate conductor for that. It is perfectly acceptable to use the steel conduit as the CPC. Now let's have a look at the regulations which apply here. And uh, there's several of these, uh, basically on a whole page on the regulations, but the important points here is this one here, which is 54321. And if I have a look at item 6 there, clearly states there that metal conduit is acceptable for use as a CPC. And uh, the uh, next point as well is that if you're going to use that, you do need to put an actual uh, wire from the terminal of each accessory to the earthing towel in the conduit box. So what this means, if you have a conduit system and it's steel coming into a box, say like this one, you've got your wires coming out of here, the line of neutral go to the socket terminals. You do also need to put a wire from the terminal in here, which comes across to the earth terminal on the socket. In the case of this, you can't rely on the fact it's got a fixed lug here and the screws will connect it to the back box. So in conduit systems, you do need that extra wire coming over. Now the next thing is that is uh, steel conduit actually large enough in terms of its cross-sectional area to use as a CPC? Now of course there's the end of it, uh, sort of just a round tube there, so hollow inside, of course just a wall thickness here. So we can actually easily calculate the uh, thickness of this and determine whether it's uh, big enough or not. Now steel conduit uh, has a wall thickness, as in the uh, bit on the outside, of 1.6 millimetres, so uh, 20 mm conduit. That's basically the same as having a 20 millimeter diameter rod and then inside you've taken away a piece inside obviously to leave 1.6 millimeters around the edge so let's uh, just do a quick calculation here so the area of 20 millimeter conduit is uh, basically pi r squared so uh, it's 10 squared in this case so it's 10 squared is 100 pi is 3.141 so the area of it if it was a solid rod would be around 314 millimeters squared now the hole inside is of course going to be smaller and because we know the outside wall is 1.6 millimetres then that makes the actual diameter of the inside part 16.8 and of course the radius is half of that so if we do the same again so it's the radius squared multiplied by pi that gives us an area of the hole of 221 millimetres squared and therefore what's left which is that outer ring which is the part we're interested in is just simply 314 minus 221 and that comes out to around 92 millimetres squared, and yes that's correct, 92 millimetres squared, so that is absolutely massive in comparison to the wires going inside, which are typically going to be in the sort of 4 or maybe 6 millimetres squared sizes. Now the 25 millimetre version, uh, same calculation, base of the outer part there, it's going to be uh, 490 millimetres squared, and then the hole inside, which will be 21.8 millimetres in diameter, gives us an area of 373, so the area on that one is 490 minus 373, and that's actually 117. So once again, a very large size. So uh, certainly should be big enough. Now, of course, that's actually made of steel and not copper. So uh, of course, it may not be uh, appropriate. So there's actually three different ways we can uh, determine whether it's big enough. First of which is to use that table 54.7 in the regulations, which suggests that for copper conductors under 16 millimeters squared, then uh, we can see the formula there is basically K1 over K2 multiplied by S. And S is the size of the... Uh, actual line conductor. Now we can get values for K1 and K2. So for copper, then K1 is a value of 115. That actually comes from table 43.1, which is on a totally different page. Steel conduit has a value of K47. That comes from table 54.5. And if we use the largest possible size, which is the 16 square millimetre, although it's in reality you're not going to uh, fit 16 square millimetre conductors in the 20 millimetre conduit because it's too big, but that's possibly the worst case scenario. So if we just do that calculation, then we get an area required for 60 millimeter line conductors. It would need to be at least 39 millimeters squared of steel. And of course, 39 is massively smaller than 92. So our 92 is easily big enough. That's by at least a factor of two. The other couple of ways you could do it is the calculation, which is the root I squared T over K. And rather than doing the entire calculation for different sizes, an easy way to look at this is that the K value for copper is about three times what it is for steel. So for a uh, steel conduit, it would need in the region of three times the actual cross-sectional area. And again, if you had a 16 one, 
we would be looking in the region of sort of 48 millimeter squared. But again, 20 meter conduit has an area of 92, so once again it's uh, around double. And the third way you could do it is the fact that copper and steel have different conductivities. So of course steel is about eight times less conductive than copper. So if you're going to use that one, and this is not in the regulations by the way, it's just a couple of properties of materials, then uh, you could say that you're going to need about eight times the size. So that would mean our 92 millimeter squared steel conduit was roughly equivalent to around 11 millimeter squared for copper. So in conclusion then, the reality is that yes, you can use steel conduit as the CPC. It is not necessary or particularly desirable to drag in a separate uh, CPC through the conduit as a separate conductor. If you're going to do that, it's going to increase the cost of the installation. It's all going to take up more space in the conduit, so you may have problems getting the actual other wiring in there because you're not allowed to ram those things full solid. And of course, uh, it just makes it take longer as well. And of course, in terms of things becoming unscrewed, the realities are that these things should be tightened up to the max on every box and whatever else, and all of that's done before the other wires are drawn in, so it's a complete uh, uniform and sealed system. And uh, certainly that is kind of the point of using it, in that your CBC then is absolutely massive, and of course uh, it doesn't need any separate wires pulling in. So that's it for this time. Until next time, thanks for watching.